Fear is going to be a player in your life. But you get to decide how much. You can spend your whole life imagining ghosts, worrying about the pathway to the future, but all there will ever be is what's happening here. And the decisions we make in this moment, which are based in either love or fear. For people that see someone who's a beast, who's done great things, you just assume that they're different than you. Right. But then you hear about your insecurities and your pitfalls and all the things that went wrong with you, and you realize, well, God, but those are the same things that go wrong with me. Like, maybe I have that inside of me, and I've just never summoned it. Right. And I, I'll tell you this. I started really realizing that when I started overcoming myself. I started getting around these real alpha males. And I always put people way above me when I was growing up. Like, my God, they had to have a lot more than me to get to where they're at. And a lot of them did. But once you get around the, the best of the best of the best people, you can kind of start breaking them down and realize, that, man, you, you're just as f***ed up as me. Our eyes are not viewers. They're also projectors that are running a second story over the picture that we see in front of us all the time. Fear is writing that script. And the working title is, I'll Never Be Enough. No matter what you gain, ego will not let you rest. It will tell you that you cannot stop until you've left an indelible mark on the earth, until you've achieved immortality. How tricky is this ego that it would tempt us with the promise of something we already possess? There's a great feeling in these overcoming these difficult things, because life is never this just constant state of I'm at a nine all day and when I'm with my wife I hit ten yay and I stay like that that's not real when it when it comes down to how long can you stay in that pool when it comes down to how far can you run right. when it comes down to how much can you push yourself past the part where you want to quit right. how far can you keep going there's a purity in that that it, it, it dissolves social order all that all the what people think about you goes out the window it's what who who are you right now that's right who are you right now that's a true statement man and i look at it as, as, as psychological warfare and that's where i started learning that that life is one big psychological warfare that you play on yourself you play on yourself man the most important conversation I ever had my with, is, is with myself the imagination is always manufacturing scenarios both good and bad and the ego tries to keep you trapped in the multiplex of the mind we're not the avatars we create. We're not the pictures on the film stock. We are the light that shines through. All else is just smoke and mirrors, distracting, but not truly compelling. I've often said that I wished people could realize all their dreams and wealth and fame and so that they could see that it's not where you're gonna find your sense of completion. Like many of you, I was concerned about going out into the world and doing something bigger than myself until someone smarter than myself made me realize that there is nothing bigger than myself. And the shit I was telling myself was so tough, it was so wrong, it was so misguided. And other people start to write that dialogue for you also. And it starts to be what you say to yourself every single day. And I started creating a whole nother warfare, a whole nother battle started becoming, I was like, oh, hang on a second, Goggins. You have these tools. The human organism, the animal that we are, needs constant stimulation because it evolved trying to find food and escape enemies. You have these tools. Your life was basically the perfect, the perfect grounds for training for where you need to go in your life. And find shelter, escape nature, escape the elements, try to survive. And this is the great joy that you have in taking care of your children, that you can protect your children from the elements and the enemies and feed them. And, and it's also the great sadness that you see in losers. All the beatings, all the, all the bullying, all the, you know, you going through uh, learning disabilities, all the struggles. It was the absolute perfect training ground for you to go to where you need to go. When I see a loser, I see some guy who's 43 years old, lives in his parents' basement, and he hates the world. I'm like, that was a baby. Man, this is a baby that somebody just gave nutrients to, whether it's f nutrients in the forms of food or in the form of thoughts and ideas and examples. And this kid developed these horrible, self-defeating patterns of behavior that have led them to this point where they're this, this middle-aged person with no future and no idea of how to get out of this rut and probably never will escape it and might just wind up sucking on a gun. 
You know, I mean, this is this is the world that we live in today. And I think part of that world is because we have been fed this line of horror that you're supposed to seek comfort. And I don't think you are. My soul is not contained within the limits of my body. My body is contained within the limitlessness of my soul. One unified field of nothing dancing for no particular reason, except maybe to comfort and entertain itself. Your job is not to figure out how it's going to happen for you, but to open the door in your head. And when the door opens in real life, just walk through it. As far as I can tell, it's just about letting the universe know what you want and working toward it while letting go of how it comes to pass. That's part of the fun. And that's how I start looking at my life versus woe is me, poopy pants, kick a rock down the street mentality. It was not. Nah. God just hooked you right the fuck up. He hooked you right up, man, with the perfect place. You were training for the first 18, 19, 20 years. You were training for this stuff, man. You have the advantage of everybody else versus my God. They're so above me. They came from a great family. Mom and dad love them. They didn't have a learn. They didn't stutter. They didn't struggle. No, man, your struggle is what made you who you are now. Through that struggle, I will now have a better day and I better do it again tomorrow or do something else because if I just think well tomorrow I'm just gonna coast and eat Twinkies and watch TV oh hello sadness my old friend hello depression because when you're not doing anything you feel like sh so I started flipping this into a whole different I started being a master of what I was scared of I was scared of my mind and I became a literally a master of that mind and that's what now from now on it sets me apart from most people I started diving into that and that's just a part of being a human being. And we can pretend that we're something other than what we really are. And we can pretend, nah, me, man, I'm just cool, just chilling, doing nothing. Bullshit. You're a human. You're a human being. You, you evolved from the hundreds of thousands of years of hunters and gatherers and people that were struggling. Those re human reward systems are carved deeply into your DNA. And if you don't respect that, if you don't respect the mechanism of happiness and fulfillment and what you really need to do in order to feel satisfied in life, camaraderie, love, family, friendship, struggle, testing yourself, learning, all those things are imperative. They're all a giant part of being a person. I watched these movies. I, you know, I talked about Rocky last time I was on here. I always equated training to mental toughening. Like, it always looked brutal. People waking up early and doing all these things. And it, looked, it looked horrible. I was like, wow, man, I got to start doing that. Not to get better, bigger, and stronger. But that is what's going to build me. That looks uncomfortable. That looks brutal. And getting up early, I don't want to do that. Some of this long list of things that I don't want to do. And through that, I found myself. I started, get, like, I'm like, you guys aren't doing this shit at school. You guys aren't getting up at five o'clock in the morning, running over here in this golf course. So I started seeing myself very differently than, than the average human being. I was like, hang on a second. I have something they don't have. And that's when I started to develop these things through working out. It was this great, never ending work ethic. And through work ethic, I developed self-esteem.